This is Architecture Corner. I'm Gregor Wigstrand and I'm talking today with Woody Sul about serendipity and the need to be prepared for serendipity. That, that's kind of an idea that, that we've lost. Uh, when, when I started out learning programming, I, I used to, to use a Profiler a lot yes. to find places where, where I could improve my code. But often today, we, we, we don't do that. Mm -hmm. We're just happy that it works. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, that's a good point. Do you use a Profiler? I have in the past. I haven't recently. Yeah, you haven't recently. Uh, yeah. And that's the same with most people. Yeah. So it depend on the type of system you're writing and what you want it to do. But I think a big part of it for me has been writing extremely simple systems. Mm -hmm. So, uh, you know, it's a typical pattern I've seen is that a department, let's just say in a company that we're writing software for, a department person decides we need some software. Mm -hmm. They can't find a product out there. They decide maybe it needs to be custom software. Mm -hmm. So they bring it to their boss and say, we need to have, or their manager, we need to have uh, this software. Well, let's talk to the IT group or whatever. They talk with them. They decide that, yeah, this is something that you can't buy. So now, to get it budgeted, we need to really prove the value. Mm -hmm. And we may need to grow it into a bigger project to make it attractive to the decision makers to decide that we're going to write this product. So already, we've gone bigger than we needed to be. We've analyzed it probably too much. And it's going to grow quite a bit because it's going to compete against other needs in the company. Once it's decided that this is worth working on, now we have a process of getting the budget for it and then getting somebody to actually do the work. So a lot of stuff's going to get done before we can even use it. I want to compress that down. I want to find a way to take that initial idea and do just enough of it to see if it has value. So for it's us. a minimum viable product. It's like a minimum viable product, but, but just finding a minimum useful thing. Mm -hmm. Because to think of it as a whole product, it could be like this. We have these calculations we need to do. And when we're done with the, all these calculations and how they feed into each other, we get some result that helps us plan uh, this month's work, just to give an example. Well, if we could just solve for one or two of those calculations, we might be able to solve for 80% of the work of doing this. Mm -hmm. And this the rest you human. can continue to do manually. And the rest could be manual. So do we need a minimum viable product or do we just need to discover if doing those things is useful? I, I think one thing that, about innovation um, is to do a lot of things fast and yes. fail. Yes. At, so if, if you, because most ideas aren't that good. But yes. you don't know before you try them in reality. That's right. So if, if, you, if you're able to try 100 ideas and, and get 20 that works, you're much better off than if you're trying 20 ideas and get two that work. Yes. And, and I would take it even to a, a much more extreme level. Those hundred things that you try will show you things you didn't ever know about. Mm -hmm. Problems we're, we're, that, that, that you couldn't have found except by trying. That's right. Or solutions to things you didn't even know you needed to solve. Now, I have a story that I would like to tell real quickly. I don't know exactly the details of it. I was in a museum and they were talking about this. I didn't get all the details, but let's see if this rings true. A, a doctor, a researcher, several hundred years ago, was trying to invent a cure for something. Mm -hmm. He noticed that while they worked, all their rags, when they would clean up, would get stained a bright green color. They ruined the rags. So you could either say, we couldn't invent our cure, and we ruined a bunch of rags, or you could notice that you invented a green dye. And in those days, green dye was difficult to do. He noticed that they were dyeing this cloth. They couldn't wash it out. They couldn't wash the green out. He started making dyes instead of making these medicines. Is, so, is this the uh, mercury-based green dye? Well, if it is, that's a very interesting story. I'd like to know if these are connected. But yeah, yeah, yeah. the one that killed Napoleon, I think it was. Is that the uh, one? It, it, several people were poisoned by uh, green dye in, uh, that was used uh, ba based on mercury that was uh, they used for paint. And uh, there was some Christmas party in the 19th century or birthday party where uh, all the children got green dye, the confection. Oh. Yeah. Now, I think this was probably before that, but I could be wrong. But regardless, don't 
stop Sorry, wearing green thing. clothes just because of what I've said. It's just a, it was an example. I don't <laughs> no, know no, the details. No, no, of. no one uses that kind but, of color anymore. But, but the point but being... It, it, serendipity. Yeah, it's like, sure, we can say, oh, we didn't get the thing we wanted, but now we're noticing something that was much better. Well, Edison said, uh, I think, uh, well, he, because he tried many, many ways to make the perfect, uh, uh, the, the filament in the light bulb that, that yes. actually glows. So he, he tried everything, kind of hair, uh, different metals, uh, red hair compared to, to dark hair. He tried lots of things and, and people asked him, well, but you tried so many things uh, that didn't work. And uh, what did he say? I think he said, yes, but I find the one that works. Yeah, it's sort of like now I know the things that don't work. I mean, that's a useful thing to know. Hmm. And this is, a, this is really true in software for me, is that if we can get you a little bit of something that's working, then that can spur our ideas on what would be the next right step. I think of this as steering. If we try to decide ahead of time what we need to do, we will often lose that ability to steer to the better things we can actually have. So I think of that as we're giving up the value of our work to fulfill what we hoped for in the first place. We can never know what we could really have. We can discover what we can really have. So, so plan for serendipity. Let's, that's exactly right. Let's work on the environment where we can have serendipity. Let's work on creating an environment where we can excel at what we do. This is a famous quote, I like to use this all the time, from Robert Henry. The object isn't to make art, it's to be in that wonderful state in which art is inevitable. Let's get in this mm. environment where the art is going to happen rather than just to set out to make art. That means we have to set out to get that wonderful state. That's a very different path. Thank you. And I, I think on those words, uh, we'll end this episode. Excellent. Thank you. Thank you, Woody.